upon the retirement of Justice Bobade, then Justice Ramana will become the Chief Justice of India. Then Justice Ramana retires in 2022, Justice Chandrachur becomes Chief Justice. From 2022 to 2024, for two long years, Justice Chandrachur will become the Chief Justice of India. Thereafter, Justice U. U. Radith becomes the Chief Justice. Thereafter, Justice Sanjay Kishan Court. So, lineage is very much known in advance. My point in telling Justice Chandrachur in detail was this, that he happened to uh, get appointment as a judge of Supreme Court at a very young age. So, he will be getting two years of tenure as the Chief Justice of India. So, when he becomes the Chief Justice of India, at that time, it is reasonable to expect that the judges of his collegium will get retired before his own retirement because they are age-wise elder to Justice Chandrachuk. In such a situation, the one who is going to succeed him in office, he shall also be included in the collegium. So, to ensure administrative continuity. And while making an appointment in relation to a high court, in relation to a high court means it may be appointing a judge to Calcutta High Court or appointing a Supreme Court judge from Calcutta High Court. Supreme Court is a federal court. All high courts are represented. I am taking this example of Calcutta High Court. Either appointing a judge to Supreme Court from Calcutta High Court or appointing a judge to Calcutta High Court. In such a case, apart from these judges, apart from these judges, appointment of High Court judge, isn't it? In the case of Supreme Court judges, four judges. In such a case, Chief Justice shall also consult the senior most judge of Supreme Court who is conversant with the affairs of that High Court by virtue of him having served that High Court in the past. Suppose such a person who is currently a Supreme Court judge might have been originally appointed as a judge of Calcutta High Court. And later he came to Supreme Court. He is specially conversant in the affairs of Calcutta High Court. He might have been appointed as a judge of Allahabad High Court. But later he got transferred to Calcutta High Court before he was elevated to Supreme Court. In either case, there is a person who is conversant with the affairs of that High Court. So, Chief Justice of India shall also consult this senior most judge and if he does not have any opinion regarding that issue, then the next senior most judge, if any, shall also, in that case, he shall be consulted. So, such judges are known as consulty judges and they are different from collegium judges. Likewise, when a High Court judge is transferred from one High Court to another High Court, then Chief Justice of India shall also consult the Chief Justices of the High Courts which are parties to the transfer. Chief Justice of India shall also consult the Chief Justices of the High Courts and the Chief Justices of the High Courts shall in turn consult the two senior most judges of his court so that the opinion so that the opinion given to the chief justice of india shall not be the opinion of the high court chief justice instead it will be the opinion of the judiciary state judiciary so and repeating when transferring a High Court judge from one to another court, Chief Justice of India shall also consult the Chief Justices of the concerned High Courts who shall formulate their opinion regarding the issue in consultation with two senior most judges of their court and Chief Justice of India shall place this opinion before the collegium. So that collegium can take a well-considered decision. And 
the correspondence between chief justice of india and the judges of collegium as well as the consulti judges shall be in writing and also shall be communicated to president and if the prescribed procedure is not followed then the recommendation is not binding on president if the prescribed procedure is not followed then the decision can be judicially reviewable as well so this is about third judges decision by which the collegium system got strengthened it got widened so as of today the appointment of judges happens by way of the second and third judges decisions in 1993 collegium came into existence in 2014 that means after 22 years parliament amended the constitution to give a decent burial to collegium system so that a national judicial appointments commission will get up created by way of amending the constitution as a replacement to the existing system of collegium in the light of the fact that collegium as an expression is nowhere found in the constitution so what compelled government to amend the constitution you see 22 years or over 21 years of collegium existence or its prolonged infancy could not justify its continuance there are so many criticisms leveled against the collegium system of appointment of judges many of which are very very relevant even today most of which are very very relevant even today so there are legal criticisms as well as practical criticisms coming to the legal criticism the first point is this that constitution even today it carries the expression consultation however supreme court interpreted consultation in such a way that the meaning of it would become concurrence no dictionary of the world would say that consultation means concurrence but supreme court interpreted that word in such a way which by which it meant something diametrically opposite to the semantics of the term semantics means meaning of the word so it is alleged that the court amended the constitution by way of a judicial pronouncement which is not within its competence ironically even post so called amendment constitution carries consultation but its implication is diametrically opposite to the meaning of that expression consultation secondly in america just an example president makes the appointment however president nominates the judge however senate is required to confirm it so confirmation happens from the part of senate so there are checks and balances you have separation of powers but if every institution is absolute in its domain then that will result in institutional absolutism not constitutional absolutism so in such a situation every institution will claim to be absolute and may work against the interest of each other so you have checks and balances so constitutionally provided checks and balances like president consulting chief justice constitutionally provided checks and balances got dispensed with by a judgment when supreme court arrogated to itself the power of appointing judges so by a judgment the doctrine of checks and balances got dispensed with nowhere in the world you will see such a mechanism where judiciary plays the most important role in deciding as to who shall be appointed as judges thirdly coming to the practical aspects in 2014 over 33 percentage of the high court judges were lying vacant 
primarily on account of the inability of collegium to fill vacancies in time. Nobody wanted Supreme Court to take over the power of appointing judges. However, given the fact that the court itself took over the decision-making power, it was its bounded duty to ensure on its administrative side that all vacancies are duty filled. Over 30 percentage of the High Court judgeships were lying vacant way back in 2014, which clearly intimates the indecisiveness, the degree of indecisiveness that characterized the functioning of collegium. Just, uh, it may be better for you to be a little aware of how the real procedure happens. There is something known as memorandum of procedure governing the appointment of judges, that is a set of procedure drawn by central government in consultation with the Chief Justice of India after third judge's decision so that an easily understandable procedure would be drawn to govern the process of appointment of judges relying on second and third judges decisions so as per memorandum of procedure when it comes to chief justice of supreme court judges of supreme court and chief justices of high courts the procedure of appointing such functionaries gets initiated from chief justice of india chief justice supreme court Supreme Court Judges and High Court Chief Justices. When it comes to the appointment of High Court Judges, the procedure gets commenced from the Chief Justice of the High Court itself. And what happens is very simple. In approximately six months prior to the arising of the vacancy, the High Court Chief Justice will consult two senior most judges of his court as mandated by the third judge's decision, two senior most judges then will send a list of names to the chief minister who acts on behalf of the governor of the state. And if chief minister agrees with all names with that response, it will be sent to Union Ministry of Law and Justice. And if chief minister has some addition to make, look, this person also shall be included, in which case, the name will go to the High Court Chief Justice again and High Court Chief Justice after consultation with his puny judges will express the opinion of judiciary after which it will be reverted back to Chief Minister and thereafter from Raj Bhavan it will get communicated to Ministry of Law and Justice from where it will the file will go to the Chief Justice of India. Even though the step will have to be initiated by the High Court Chief Justice. You can't put the blame of non-filling of vacancies on High Court Chief Justice due to the reason that it's not because of his inability. Vacancies were not getting filled, but primarily on account of the indecisiveness of collegium. Also due to this reason that it's very difficult to decide on the appointment of High Court judges due to the reason that once you make appointment, thereafter whatever he does, you will not be in a position to remove from him from office, as was exemplified in the case of Justice Karnan, somebody for whom appointment was like uh, boon being given to Basmasu. So after his appointment, after a reasonable period of without uh, waiting for long, he started criticizing all judges. Even Chief Justice of India was alleged as corrupt by none other than Justice Karnan. So they are were very much concerned. Once a person is appointed, then it's not easy to remove him. Till date, not even a single judge got removed from office by parliament. So the process is extremely cumbersome, as a result of which indecisiveness characterized the functioning of collegium. So non-appointment of judges. Thirdly, Justice Ruma Pal, a former judge of Supreme Court, so she uh, once remarked that the manner of appointing judges is one of the most heavily kept secrets of the country. That means even a Supreme Court judge feels that 
Nobody is aware of how judges are appointed. Justice Chalameshwar, who wrote NJAC judgment, expressed his opinion, who, who, express, who, uh, had this, who wrote dissenting judgment in NJAC case, wrote in the judgment that even a judge of Supreme Court who is not fortunate to become the Chief Justice of India does not know how judges, how what is happening in collegium. Even a judge of Supreme Court who is not fortunate to become the Chief Justice of India, he was making an apparent reference to himself only due to the reason that Justice Deepak Misra and Justice Chalameshwar, both of them got appointed on the same day. However, Collegium decided to swear in Justice Deepak Misra first and Justice Chalameshwar later, as a result of which Justice Chalameshwar lost the opportunity to become Chief Justice of India, primarily due to this reason that Justice Chalameshwar was elder to Justice Deepak Misra by age, due to which first Justice Chalameshwar would have to confront retirement, then only Deepak Misra would get retired as a result of which once Justice Deepak Misra gets appointed as the Chief Justice of India, then the next step is the retirement of Justice Chalameshwar only. So he expected that considering his age, he would be sworn in first, but Collegium decided to uh, swear in the most competent among the two and that decision was not that much appreciated by Justice Chalameshwar and that found a poignant reflection in the judgment wherein he stated that even a judge of Supreme Court who is not fortunate enough to become the Chief Justice of India doesn't know what is happening in Collegium. As a matter of fact, RTI doesn't extend to Collegium decisions. Nobody knows whether Collegium has a minutes book to record its proceedings as a result of which the decisions taken in the Collegium will never be in public domain. The decisions are in public domain. The details of the decisions taken, how decisions are arrived at, why I told you that decisions are in public domain, because since Justice Zeebak Misra, the decisions of the Collegium, that is Collegium resolutions, are getting uploaded on the website of Supreme Court. But only the outcomes are uploaded. You do not know the opinion of individual judges. You do not know the details of the deliberations. Only the final outcome, that only will get uploaded. Supreme Court preaches right to information to the countrymen. But when it comes to its own collegium decisions, that is kept beyond the purview of right to information act, something that is apparently paradoxical. So transparency and accountability is suffered in the age of collegium. That is something which even NJAC judgment of Supreme Court recognizes that all is not well with collegium is something which was recognized by the NJAC judgment itself. Transparency and accountability suffered during the tenure of collegium. But there is another side of the story as well about which also you should be aware you see if the details of the process of appointing judges, if that get divulged, then that may affect the confidentiality of the process. Appointment process may be attempted to be influenced. For example, uh, a person is being considered to be appointed as a judge of Supreme Court. He remained a judge of High Court. He has now 10 more years in service. Supreme Court decided to turn down the name. Now, this is a person who is to remain as a judge of a high court for 10 more years or 5 more years. Supreme Court decided him as not fit to be appointed as a judge of Supreme Court. Will he be able to inspire the trust of his own court in the coming 5 years? If this information goes into public domain, that he is not fit to be appointed as a judge of Supreme Court. So that very much affects the quality of adjudication as well as the legitimacy of the decisions 
taken by that judge. So there are confidentiality concerns are not so small, but personally I believe that let sun, sunlight be the best disinfectant. The more there is transparency, the more there would be accountability. Proceedings will get sanitized completely if there is complete transparency. Given all that, there is this side as well, which also deserves serious consideration. So transparency and accountability. Likewise, it is alleged that whenever you write any criticism in your answer sheet, if you are asked to critically analyze whatever it is, when it comes to certain areas or certain points, you will you shall make it a point to state that it is alleged. Otherwise, it will be like a personal opinion drawn by you. It is alleged that judicial appointments are remaining the monopoly of over 200 legal families or judicial families. Judges, they do come from the family of judges. Judges appoint judges. As a result of which, what happens, it is alleged that people from the family of judges, they only get preference. So we got, we became a democracy in 1950. But democratization of judicial appointments didn't happen even till date. It is something which was placed even before the constitution bench, which was hearing this NJAC case that you appoint only your relatives. It's a give and take relationship between judges. If I am a judge in the collegium, I will appoint the relative of a judge who may not be in the collegium at that time. But when his turn comes, he will ensure that though I will not be in Supreme Court at that time, he will ensure that my relative will get appointed by the time I might get retired. So it's a give and take relationship, something which goes against uh, the propriety of judicial appointments. Likewise, the avowed objective of appointment of judges was to select the best and the most suitable persons, as was acknowledged by NJ, uh, as was acknowledged by the second judge's decision. The best and the most suitable. Unfortunately, the best and the most suitable many a time don't reach Supreme Court primarily on account of the ego conflicts and clashes between the judges. There are umpteen number of examples, umpteen examples which can be shown, but due to paucity of time, let me tell you one example, though not for the purpose of examination, but will enable you to understand and comprehend the complexity in the process. Uh, there was a Chief Justice there in Gujarat High Court, his name was Bhaskar Bhattacharya, a person of exceptional scholarship, and uh, he happened to be the senior most high court judge at his time. Very much deserved the appointment as a judge of Supreme Court. Unfortunately, the great judge was not appointed as a judge of Supreme Court. Later, he revealed it in public that his nomination was, well, while I was teaching you third judge's decision, I think now that I forgot to mention you one thing, that the real reason why second judge's decision required a clarification from Supreme Court was that the second judge's decision said that there shall be primacy of the opinion of uh, Chief Justice of India in the collegium. So Chief Justice shall consult the two senior most judges, but there shall be primacy of the opinion of Chief Justice. So, why privacy if there is consultation? That was the question. So, Supreme Court ruled here that Chief Justice of India will continue to have privacy. However, if more than one judge of the collegium opposes a proposal, in other words, if two or more judges of the collegium, if they oppose a proposal, then Chief Justice shall not recommend that proposal. So some type of democratic portion was infused into the decision making. Chief Justice of India shall continue to have primacy. But if two or more judges of the collegium oppose a proposal, then that recommendation shall not be tendered to president. However, however, no opinion that is contrary to that of Chief Justice of India shall be given to president. No opinion that is contrary to that of Chief Justice of India means whatever be the final decision, 
that shall have the support of the chief justice of india in other words you will have to craft a consensus within the collegium there can be dissent of one judge no issue regarding a proposal but if more than one judge means it's a substantial dissent then the majority of numbers that alone doesn't matter what matters is that dissent so if two or more judges or if more than one judge is opposing a proposal then that proposal shall not be given as recommendation by chief justice of india so coming to so third judge's decision thereby answered the most grueling confusion which arose out of the second judge's decision now coming to the episode of justice baskar batajaria when it came to his own elevation to supreme court he alleged that the then chief justice justice altamas kabir had exercised the veto over the decision to elevate justice baskar batajaria to supreme court no opinion which is contrary to that of chief justice so that veto power was vested with justice altamas kabir why did he veto according to him the real reason lay in what happened in calcutta high court where baskar batajaria was a senior judge who was that in the collegium of calcutta high court so chief justice of the high court plus two senior most judges they together constitute the deliberative body so justice altamas kabir wanted his sister advocate leela kabir to be elevated to the bench of calcutta high court and since she was not a person of that accomplishment uh, he didn't support justice baskar batajaria as a judge of calcutta high court did not support her nomination due to which she was not elevated but the affectionate brother could not easily forget that emotional scar so he kept it in mind and when the ball came to his court after he became the chief justice he ensured that justice baskar batajaria won't reach the portals of supreme court and we could have dismissed the revelation made by justice baskar batajaria as the frustration of a disappointed judge but for the reason that we can't conclude it so simply due to this reason that on the eve of the retirement of justice altamas kabir otherwise he was a very nice judge on the eve of his retirement just two weeks before his retirement two, two or four weeks not able to speak that maximum a month to the shock and surprise of the entire legal fraternity there came a news that advocate leela kabir who was on the verge of 60 years of age was appointed as a judge of calcutta high court though she was on the verge of her own retirement at the time of appointment in 60 years of age limping on to the date of retirement when then she was appointed as a judge of calcutta high court so the doting brother ensured that before he retired his sister is anointed as a judge of a, of a high court so this is how now what is the implication why did i take this specific example you see when baskar batajaria was denied we lost a very good supreme court judge and the person who came in his place he he came to be known as one of the most laziest judges <laughs> well that is something different now when justice leela kabir became a high court judge it's not that somebody whose candidature was refused earlier was made a judge more implication lies here that somebody who tremendously deserved it he lost the opportunity as a result of which quality of justice being delivered at supreme court as well as calcutta high court might have got affected so the best and the most suitable they more often remain solemn homilies instead of effective expressions solely intended to ensure that the best and the most suitable will get appointed all these things compelled government to decently and formally bury collegium by way of 99 amendment act i will first address your doubts then we will take up 99 amendment act and njac judgment in case if you have any query you can ask Hmm? 
Why there is no single judge bench? A person taking a decision. But you have Supreme Court before a Supreme Court to go on appeal. A single person is prone to mistakes. So, division that. For transfer of uh, high court judges, there are five such positions. But for appointment of high court judges, only three. Because transfer often becomes controversial. This is, in fact, the real reason. I'll tell you. When a judge is transferred, the transfer decision becomes amenable to public scrutiny. So let there be maximum deliberation. When you are transferring a judge, mm -hmm. the cases which are being heard by him, that will not be heard and decided. So that has a lot to do with the independence of judicial. Appointment is different. Transfer requires greater gradient of deliberation. So clear? Yeah, please. Deliberately avoided? We are saying it is wrong. No, I was only criticizing Supreme Court interpreted consultation to mean concurrence. According to Supreme Court, from constituent assembly debates, it's very clear that the uh, the, the, the discussion, the, the, the consultation shall remain as broad as possible to ensure that the best decision is taken. So they say that such deliberation is can be seen there from the constituent assembly debates means such shall be the nature of consultation. So government, Supreme Court says that we didn't create it, that was very much embedded in the constitution and it is dated since constituent assembly debates. So government says that, no, you didn't discover, you invented it. So it's all about how you are looking. I feel personally that consultation means consultation only. You cannot, you are not supposed to bring concurrence as the meaning, that is unfair. Of course, ultimately what Supreme Court says, that is a law. That is something which we have to respect. Yes. Okay, take the <laughs> We are not taking down whatever we have discussed till now. That I will upload. We are moving on to the next topic. If you want, you can leave a little space so that you can... Whatever is being dictated, that will get uploaded. Either you can read the print or you can yourself write on the register, whatever it is. We are moving on to the next topic. The constitution in brackets. The constitution in brackets. 99th amendment. Close the brackets. Act. Article 217, I'm sorry, 124, close 2, Article 217, close 1, and Article 222, close 1, were amended to replace the expression, to replace the, the expression, replace the expression in court marks consultation. Court marks, consultation, unquote, with again court marks 
on the recommendation of on the recommendation of national 